Hi everybody. There's Bruno. Yeah. Notice anything different? He's missing his beard. He was having some eating issues and getting too much food in his beard, so I had to go ahead and trim it down. I'm Mike, and today we're back in the garage. Um, do a little tinkering and a little show and tell, maybe, I guess. Um, I appreciate everybody that's recently subscribed. Thank you very much. Um, looks like you guys have enjoyed my past few videos by the amount of viewership. So I thank all of you for watching. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I've been doing this now not even close to a year. So maybe we'll have a... <coughs> Excuse me, year-long celebration. Um, first off, uh, we'll do the show and tell before we get into today's little tinkering. Um, I have managed. Now, before I get into this, there was a while ago I thought I bought uh, like a heavy-duty stapler, and I. Yeah, a few months ago, during the winter time. And I'll be dipped in buttermilk if I can figure out where the heck I put it. I've looked through this garage numerous times. I've looked out at the laboratory and the workbench and down there. Haven't found it. Um, last I thought I saw it was here in the garage and after going through it again today I'm wondering if I even bought the darn thing I'm pretty sure I did but anyway um, I have since bought at our local little uh, resale shop for um, the homeless charity and I bought a new one. Well, it looked pretty new. It was still in whatever was left of the box. It's an Arrow T50, made in the USA by, by Arrow Fastener Company out of Saddlebrook, New Jersey. So I bought that. It had a few staples in it. I bought that probably a couple weeks ago. Then, a couple of days ago, it was probably Monday or Tuesday, found this coffee can for $5. Staples. And it's all the staples for that staple gun. So, now I've got a whole box quarter inch, nine sixteenths, uh, half inch, three eighths, all that fit this staple gun. Okay, there's a whole bunch even down on the bottom. Uh, quarter inch for the Type 50. So I think I'm going to be pretty well supplied with staples for a long time. Now, I don't plan on forgetting where I put this one. Because <laughs> here's the next thing. Found some cork board. $1.50. I paid five bucks for the stapler, five for the staples, and I'm going to use this Just a second. Let me get this out of your way so we can get a better view. On this little deal I found here. Now, 
Let me back you up here a little bit so you get a full shot of it. It is a wooden style tack box. And I mean, it's wood. A little dirty on the side here, but it's all been handmade. Now, it's got... This is what I think it was used for. I think it was used by um, a horseshoer. Um, a horseshoer is somebody that goes around the farms, shoes horses, and they carry like pliers and nippers and spare horseshoes and the little hoof nails, stuff like that. The reason I say that is because it has a horseshoe on there or some sort of a brand. Reminded me of a horseshoe. And I've seen seen uh, horseshoers um, carry these style boxes, but then there's also another uh, burning in there. It looks like a triangle and an E. So I don't know whose brand that is. I'm not familiar with it. Um, I'm. Just not quite sure. So if any of you local viewers um, or even area viewers, I don't think this got too far out of Iowa, if at all, recognize that mark. Leave me a comment or something because I'd be really interested in the, knowing who um, made this or who used this. Um, there is one thing that does kind of um, note that I'm going to actually try and take care of. Um, some of these nails need to be re-tapped in. But if you can look at the handle there, see here. Uh, right about there. Yeah, let's get you up a little higher. There we go. There's a gap between the handle and the side piece here. Um, they are nailed in. So I was thinking either getting a new piece. I'd rather keep the original and just do something to maybe shim that up. Because there is a significant um, gap between the top and, and it's also on the bottom here too also that uh, I would like to really try and fix and then maybe use a screw instead and then level this off because the handle does go quite a far bit down into this channel and these two things here are the high spots but what I was planning on doing was cleaning this up lining it with the cork using the new staple gun and just kind of use it as an overall carry-all um, I do have an old wagon out the back door here you might have seen it a couple of times haven't redone it or done anything with it but um, the generator that I did a couple of videos ago I've been starting it every week letting it idle for a few minutes and then operating it under load once a week so that I don't end up with the same problem that I had when I got it which was a gummy mess in the carburetor and the fuel filter and everything else so yeah that is kind of where I'm at with the, my new acquirements um, but today's tinkering and I'm kind of excited about this myself because it actually turned out really, really well. I get this out of the way. <clears throat> now, a few videos ago, I showed you guys. Um, it, oh, we went to a swap meet in the spring flea market type thing where I picked up quite a bit um, 
I think it was probably maybe eight or ten videos ago. Maybe even more than that. Um, but I picked up three perfect handled screwdrivers. Now since then, I have redone two. And I did the handles differently. Well, not differently. But what I have done is this is kind of what I started off with. This one here. Um, let's see if I can get you a better shot here. Hold on. Whoop. That almost went horribly wrong. Is kind of what I start off with. Um, this had a bunch of surface rust on it. It's number, got the number four in the triangle here. So I think that's like a four inch shank. Um, had a bunch of varnish over that, so I scraped that off. Uh, and then just kind of wet sanded it with 400 to get the surface rust off. Haven't gotten quite everything off yet. Boy, this really makes this difficult. Hit. <laughs> Should be sitting in my chair doing this. Um, there is a nick in it here where the wood's missing. So that's as far as I've gotten with that. Um, in the, the previous video, um, you, you, you'll be able to see what condition I started them off at. Really bad. <coughs> so here's the herb one. After, here, let me get my chair so I can see a little better what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now I can at least see what I'm doing in the camera. Okay. There we go. So, this one was uh inner one. You can see that in there. Is it going to focus for me? Probably not. There we go. Made in U.S. of A. So this one's telling me it's a little bit older. Uh, got the corrosion off. I did have to kind of redo the tip a little bit. Man, this is really just having a heck of a time trying to focus, isn't it? Um, I did have to fill in with some wood putty on the handle. That is dark mahogany. And re, I had to redo the back end a little bit and then put a coating of polyurethane on it. Now, is this a perfect showpiece or like it came out of the, the store? Probably not. But uh, to be quite honest with you, it looks like it would be a real good uh, user around the garage. So that's the first one. The second one's a little shorter. It is no name. Um, but I did this one in a dark walnut. Um, it has an H with an arrow through it. This one's also made in the USA. I don't know if I can get you guys to see that. I don't know if it'll show up, but it is like right along here. And then there's an H with the arrow with two arrowheads on it. Um, smooth that out. I did not have to fill this one out. Um, of course, got tried to get as much pitting and stuff out of it as I could. But I think that handle came out really nice. Again, it fits really good, nice and smooth. Um, again, had to kind of do a little bit of work with the tip and probably going to take some emery paper on these shafts and then put a nice coating of wax on there 
for it. So, yeah. So today's little tinkering is getting maybe this sanded. Maybe see if we can get some of the pitting removed. Doesn't look like it's too deep. Um, smooth out the handle. I got the varnish off, but it does look like there's some staining in there, but I'm not too concerned about that. I just want to make sure it's smoothed out. Looks like somebody had their initials in there at one time. Maybe HA. I don't know. And see if we can't get some putty to fill in that little gouge there and kind of reshape the back end of it a little bit. So, um, yeah, let's uh, get over to the belt sander and see what we can do. Okay, guys. Well, here we are at the belt sander. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean the belt up a little bit. Sorry for the noise. Um, I don't have like a muffle filter deal on the, the phone apparently. So we'll clean up the belt a little bit and see what we can do with this uh, screwdriver. Okay, um, I'm using an 80 grit belt, um, and I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on it. Uh, I'm trying to keep the temp down, um, but as you can see, we're getting some of that pitting out of there, but there is still quite a bit, but it isn't too bad. I just take it slow, take my time, try and keep from overheating it the the tool and uh let's keep going and see how we can get this handle to look and maybe do a little bit of a repair on that and reshape the end if we can and continue on
if we can get some of this Dutch dough. Hmm. Looks like we got split here. Looks like we got split like right here. And of course we got that Nick to fill in there. Maybe. I don't know. Do you guys think I should fill that in or do you think I should probably uh, leave that as character? Like I said, I don't resell any of my stuff. Hmm. Just haven't really decided. Well, let's push on. Making uh, funny movements. <laughs> All right, guys. I think the mailman's gonna be coming around here, just so um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a minute here, and so you know we don't hear him bark through the noise, make more noise. Thanks. Okay, we're back at it. some staining in the wood you know like I said you don't know what these have been sitting in or anything like that but I think some emery paper um, I've got some natural stain or should I just clear coat this uh, kind of 
Try to do something with that end tip there. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, get some of the pitting out. Um, I don't know. It's, Now I've got some, you know, the zero 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 steel wool here, and see what kind of a. See if that lightens up some of them stains. Hmm, maybe not so much. But you know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave it because I did two real nice ones. The only thing I'm going to do is maybe natural stain it and put a coating of uh, uh, polyurethane over the handle and leave it just as it is. Because I think these are unique. Unique. Um, I was fortunate enough that all these scales were in nice and tight. So, um, probably the next time I run across, I'll probably try my hand at maybe trying to uh, uh, form my own handles. But, uh, yeah, I'll keep chipping away at that, and I'll show you the final. Because by the time I stain it and stuff, then we got to take the time to let that dry. And I usually let that polyurethane cure for a good three days before I start handling it. And then uh, we'll see how she comes out after that. So that'll probably wrap us up for today. Whoa! Almost tripped over the own cord. So I appreciate everybody subscribing. I appreciate everybody uh, watching and stopping by. Oh, hey, you laying in the sun? You want to say bye to everybody? Come on. Yeah, he's laying out there in the sun, huh? Good boy. All right. Were you a good boy? Yes, you were. No barkies today, huh? Well, say goodbye to everybody and tell them thanks for watching. And as always, keep on tinkering.